well, actually, I, I wanted to ask you something else that you had mentioned before, and I just really want to get it in because I think it's so fascinating because you work also as a sound historian. And so you were saying to me that you, uh, that, that people throughout history have heard sound differently. And it's, it's uh, something you have to keep in mind or often do, do keep in mind when you're starting to work on a project. So could you talk about how do people throughout history hear sound differently? Oh, well, I think it's more about, um, well, it's really hard to explain, but I think it's sort of early, um, early encounters with sound technology. So um, very, very obvious example. This is some girls here at school somewhere or other in the 1880s, I suspect, or maybe a bit later. Um, and it's called a study in expressions. And of course, they're hearing a human voice for the very, very first time that's disembodied. And I think I find that again, especially with horror, I think that if you start to look in this sort of area about what, how has technology changed our sort of what I call our sense of ourselves, our corporeal envelope, and how is that, how, is, how do people sense that when they first did it? And, and are there things, sort of sensations and feelings you can pick out from that? So uh, I think I, I mentioned to you, Val, that um, here's a very interesting, you know, when, when the um, Edison phonograph, the first machine to record and playback sound, when Edison first demonstrated it in his lab to scientific Americans, so not some, you know, hippies or anything, like a bunch of, a bunch of scientists and technologists came to his lab to see it. The way they wrote it up in 1877 in Scientific American, they said, he's invented a machine through which the dead can be reheard. And that utterly blew their mind. And, and, and it is mind blowing when you think about it, you know, like we sort of listen to the dead every day in our earbuds, yeah, but this is a massive human transformation. 